Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are back working on the interior of the Al Ferrari. Okay, so those of you who missed it, uh, last week I spent a fair bit of time building the brake master cylinder and clutch master cylinder um, positions for the car and uh, and fitting them in and, uh, and fitting in the reservoirs. For those of you who missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, think about doing it because it does help us out. Um, now, this was obviously quite a uh, controversial topic. Some people thought it was a great idea, some people didn't. A lot of people obviously didn't watch the video properly because they made comments about, oh, you're, uh, you're weakening it, you're uh, exposing the, uh, the underside of the car, you're all sorts of stuff. Obviously, as I mentioned in the previous video, I am putting a cover over this. I'm not gonna leave them open like they are. Um, I thought that should be pretty uh, obvious, but obviously not. Um, these are definitely going to be covered. There's, uh, I'm going to have a nice sealed uh, box, which I'm going to make this episode, to cover these up and to make sure they're nice and sealed. And um, there was uh, lots of people who looked at the brakes and really loved the brakes. And thanks again to Chris. The brakes are amazing. They're going to uh, be a fantastic addition to this car. Uh, particularly with the power, I think we are not going to have any trouble stopping it. It's going to be a good, uh, a good solution. Now, uh, before we get into uh, tackling what I'm going to do down here, let's have a look at something else I've been working on. So I thought I would finally bring myself into the 21st century and I've uh, actually been playing around a bit with Fusion 360 doing some uh, proper CAD modeling, not just cardboard aided design, but actually computer aided design um, and, uh, and working on some products and got myself a 3D printer. And um, I thought uh, a good project to start off with was making myself up the Alferrari badge. Now, uh, I came up with a sketch of this font uh, a long time ago. I didn't want all Alfa font or, or Ferrari font or anything like that. Um, I just thought I would play around and, uh, and blend the two together um, to sort of, uh, yeah, I, I think it works. It works better for me. Um, there were designs that uh, I've had mates and stuff come up with uh, using the Alpha and the Rari in uh, fr from from either and mixing them. I don't. I, I like the way it blends together, and um, yeah, playing around with the uh, the the 3D printing and the 3D modeling is 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 actually really cool. I'm uh, I'm amazed at how quick it is to actually uh, make up designs. I thought it's time to get into these things, and it's uh, yeah. I'm I'm really. I think I'm going to be using it more in the future, uh, particularly as you don't necessarily need to have really expensive stuff. 3D printers are quite affordable these days, and uh, the amount of stuff you can do is really cool. And uh, yeah, so I played around with this badge. I like the size, even though the holes are here. The original badge that was on here was a uh, was a two liter badge, 2000 it said, and it had big long lines either side. If I did the badge bigger to fit cover the whole lot, it wouldn't look right. And it's easy enough for me to weld up the holes to uh, make it fit. And I think that's the right size for this, uh, this spot on the boot. So I'm very happy. Obviously this 3D printed model is not the final shape. I can get this laser cut or whatever uh, and do it out of metal. There's, there's lots of suggestions on Instagram, etc., about uh, um, lost castings and all sorts of ways I can do this. But um, yeah, that's uh, a bit of a prototype to see how it goes. And now before I get back into actually uh, working on the car um, is this. Many of you saw that I keep forgetting and leaving this in the machine and there were lots of suggestions about uh, this chuck key. This is the chuck key for my lathe, for those who didn't recognize it. Um, I keep forgetting and leaving it in the chuck. Um, there are ones you can get that actually have a, uh, a spring on the, the chuck or you can, I could try and put one on there, put a spring on it so that it won't actually stay in the chuck. It'll only just, it'll spring back out again. Um, but uh, there's been a few suggestions um, of the easiest way to fix this, and that is to just paint it bright yellow. I'm gonna paint this bright yellow so it stands out so you cannot, like, you, you'll see it instantly. I always uh, have safety at forefront of my mind when I'm on the lathe, and I always turn it by hand first anyway. But um, painting this bright yellow is the first thing I'm gonna do just to make sure that I don't leave it in there again.
All right, so I've made myself a, uh, a box. There was a bit of cutting and folding there. That three-in-one folder is handy for some things, but it's it's really not good at any of those three things. It's yeah, half of these folds I had to end up doing by hand because you just can't do them in the world in that folder. Um, but my basic framework is here and this will sit onto the floor. Now, the floor is not flat, so I need to now start sort of trimming and tweaking to get this to sit just right, uh, nice flat on the floor, so then I can weld it in and it's a nice um, solid part of the car. we go we have a lid for the uh, for the box so the box is all designed up now ready to go into the car um, I cut and stepped a lot of these bottom edges so that they'll fit nicely into the floor of the car and then the lid sits on nicely clips on nicely it's nice and and solid and I'll actually put a uh, uh, a rubber bead around the edge. I've actually got some, some sort of rubber trimming that I can put around that edge and it will just clip on and seal in quite nicely and neatly to the car. So now, um, I think the easiest way to weld this in is gonna be to uh, punch it out and plug weld it and then I'll, uh, I'll fill up all the seams and, and hammer it all into place and make it all nice and neat. So let's mount this into the car. Reservoir box, it's all in, it's all uh, welded down. Um, the cover fits on nicely. It's all nice and covered. When this is actually filled up with sound deadening and all the rest of it, I'll put sound deadening inside the box. Everything will be covered in carpet. This will level out a lot more and be nice and uh, uh, sort of integrated into the floor. You won't even see it, uh, but it's gonna give me easy access to the reservoir. So I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing I need to start having a look at though, while I'm in here, is these pedals. So um, some of you may have seen that I put this uh, Toyota Yaris uh, electric steering column in here. And what I didn't factor in properly is the actual position of the pedals. The pedals sit very high in this car and, uh, and I've mounted this. I did some temporary mounts that are just too currently, currently too low in the car. So what I'm going to do is I need to uh, start readjusting my mounts for the steering column so that I actually have clearance for the pedals and my feet aren't going to touch the, uh, the steering rack. So I have just spent a lot of thinking time then trying to work out exactly what I'm going to do down here to basically, I've moved the, uh, the column, the pedal now goes all the way through, just. But I think what I'm actually going to do, you can actually see that the pedal, the clutch pedal is quite a bit longer than the brake pedal. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the, uh, the tabs off the back of this pedal and re-weld it on a little bit further down it will take away some of my leverage, so I will make the clutch heavier, but there's just, it's just too tight just here for my purposes. To try and fit all of this in, it just, it's just too tight. And because the other thing I need to look at is, obviously I've cut this big horrible hole into the firewall of the car and I need to seal it up somehow. And what I am actually thinking is the, um, 
The, the difficult thing is, is I can't really seal it here very easily with the uh, the steering shaft going through the uh, uh, through the firewall. It's it's not a, a great place to seal it. The way I'm going to seal it is actually on the back of this plate here. Um, I can bolt on to the factory location. It's a flat uh, panel that I can make a uh, a plate and a tube that goes along and then another one drops down and access will be from the engine bay side. So if you can see here on the engine bay side, the uh, steering shaft is that just, just there and uh, you can see through these uh, factory holes here where it currently sits. And what I'm gonna do is I will, I'm gonna be blocking up these holes anyway. Uh, I can make a, a bit of a sort of a recessed tunnel that you can get to at least the top bolt from this side, the bottom bolt from inside the car and, uh, and have that steering column bolted on inside um, a tube. There'll be access to get the bolt for, the, uh, uh, for this universal joint here so that you can assemble and disassemble the steering from partially engine bay, partially inside the car. It's quite a, a difficult thing to get it to look neat and also to seal properly from the elements. Alright, so that was uh, a lot of fabricating and what was I doing? So uh, basically I made my plate here that I've bolted on. So this will be where the, uh, the steering column bolts on into the car. And now I need to, uh, basically I need to make a shroud that goes around the column and all the way into the firewall. So it'll be open on the firewall side, closed in the engine, but in the interior. So uh, completely sealed off as per a firewall. And uh, basically what I had to do is I had to come up with some sort of way to, to cover it. And uh, if I connect up, here's my uh, steering shaft. So the steering shaft goes on like so. And I need to have a, a cover that goes over and it's going to be in a shape where I can get to one bolt on the inside of the um, interior. This will be in the interior. And this bolt I'll be able to get with a socket from the engine bay to undo the, uh, the, the steering column itself. It's not something that's gonna have to be undone very often, but obviously I need access. So I've got that there. And then I've got the, uh, the steering column. I measured the angle it's coming out at because obviously it's, uh, it sort of, it bends inside the car. And I cut our piece that will, uh, that will guide it so I've got basically what I've got is I've got a, uh, I just got pieces of exhaust tube that I had lying around and cut them on an angle and sort of sculpted it to sort of sit in that sort of shape. I had to cut it open to get, a, get it as big as I needed. And I've just gone and cut out a piece of, um, it's mild steel mixing with stainless. It doesn't, doesn't matter, it's all gonna be painted anyway. So it doesn't need to be stainless, it's just I had stainless. Uh, so this will, will weld in here. And then I'll have to make up some plates to fill in the, uh, the triangular gap at the end. And then we need to try and fit it in the car. So ultimately all that means is that uh, I've got to start tacking this all together and uh, see what we can come up with to make this nice and neat. So I've made up my piece. I had to extend it wider just along this edge here and then um, sort of add in a taper so that it's open. It'll sit something like, like, like so in the engine bay. So um, it'll be cut off 
to meet the firewall and you'll have access through the top to put a, um, uh, a socket in to be able to undo one of the nuts and then the other nut will be uh, done on the inside for the steering column itself. Um, the last thing I need to do now is this knuckle joins on with a, uh, with a bolt on the side onto this section here and the only way you're going to be able to really do it is to have access through the side of this unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out uh, an access hole where you can go in with a socket and do the nut and then put a, um, uh, a grommet in there to seal it all up and make it all a nice sealed unit. So that is what I'm going to do right now and then we should be good. And we have an access hole which is perfectly in line. I just tested it out uh, to access this uh, nut to actually screw it on. And I've got you know just a generic grommet here that uh, fits the hole quite nicely. And the grommet fits perfectly. Now this was uh, quite a bit of playing around. Um, lots of thought going into how I'm going to bolt it in, how I'm going to access it. I'm really happy with the, uh, the solution I came up with. I think it's going to work really well. Um, last thing I need to do is just need to trim this base plate so that uh, it will sit beautifully when I eventually weld it on. But I don't want to do that until I've got it in the car. I've uh, trimmed up my, my piece, so again, now this is going to sit over something like that. Sit nice and neat and tidy. So that is about all I can do until I pull the engine out. Um, and I don't have time to do that today. I am definitely out of time. So I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, by 1948 Ferrari was beginning to ramp up its production of cars with its release of the 166S. This car was again built on the same tube frame chassis as the 125. The Columbia designed V12 was again bumped up to 2 litres with single overhead cans making 130 horsepower. As was the custom at the time, the cars were built as a chassis which the customer could then take to the coach builder of their choice for the body. 12 166S's were produced nine of which were cycle fenders, a Spider Corsa, two by coach, were coach built by Carrozzeria Alemano, and then the last one by Touring. Ferrari then went on to produce 47 of the 166 MMs, which had power increased to 140 horsepower. The majority of these were bodied by Touring in Bacchetta form. The Ferrari 166S went on to win the Targa Floria that year, and again the following year in 1949, it was the winner. It also won the 1948 Milli Miglia, and came in first and second for the following year in the same race. In 1949, a 166mm also gave Ferrari its first ever win at the 24 Hours Le Mans, making it the only car to win all three of the big races in one year. Yeah. All right, uh, another one where I don't feel like I really got a lot accomplished, but, uh, but it was so much time, particularly figuring out how I was gonna do that steering. I've been thinking about it for ages. I've sort of been putting it off because I know it's gonna be, I knew it was gonna be a headache and it's actually, um, I'm really happy with the way that I managed to bring it all together. So, um, but that means next episode I've got to pull the engine out again. <laughs> the engine in the gearbox is just. Uh, is that, how many times have you pulled engines out? And oh, I don't know. I think it's. I think think it's a drinking game now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, stay away from the shots and um, yeah. please like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to follow the videos a day, see the videos a day early. Yes. Follow us on Patreon and you'll get to see them ad free. And uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, those places uh, you might get hints and tips of what's coming up. Uh, I often sort of uh, release things there early. So, all right, guys, <laughs> we'll see you in no. the next one. <laughs> I wanted to do them together, but I just didn't have quite enough. Yeah. Bumped up again to two litres. No. Yes. I think I need cancer. Plus power. Okay, this is what you're written. The customer could take to the coach builder two of their choice for the body. Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs>